Hey, it's Matthew. I'm at the end of a teaching day and I fancy sharing with you something that is really quite cool to play on guitar. Right now we are in the midst of technical mid-session assessments. They always happen in the springtime at the start of the year. So all the students here throughout the whole building, the whole conservatoire where I teach, they're all practicing scales, they're practicing arpeggios, they're practicing all sorts of different orchestral excerpts and loads of exercises and things to improve their technique. I'm going to share with you tonight a really cool uh, type of scale which is really built out of a type of chord which for guitar is really quite unique the way we do it on guitar. So all instruments play scales. Violinists, wind players, guitarists, pianists, we all play scales and arpeggios. Some of them are a bit more idiomatic or they speak to a part of our technique which is part of our instrument and for guitarists a really fun type of scale to practice is the diminished seventh scale and the reason for it is it uses a cool pattern for the left hand and you can also work in some really quite clever ways to improve your alternation in your right hand plucking as well so it's a really good scale for the guitarists what is a diminished uh, seventh chord or what is a diminished seventh scale so Really what happens with a diminished uh, seventh scale or seventh chord is it stacks minor thirds. It sort of piles minor thirds up on top of each other. Now, if you don't really know what I mean by minor thirds, you can do this really in a very simple way. So say we take any starting note, we can pile those minor thirds onto them. So say we take C. So I'm using finger one, fret three of the A string, okay, C. If we go three semitones up from there, we get E flat or D sharp. Now that is the beginning of our minor stacking and piling our minor third. If we go from there up another three semitones from the E flat, we will find ourselves on F sharp or G flat. And then if we go up again three semitones from there, find ourselves on A and then if we go up again from there we find ourselves back on C. So we're just stacking those three semitone moves, those minor thirds upon each other. So the two octave diminished seventh scale on the guitar is really cool because using those three semitone movements allows us to use our first finger and then our weakest finger the fourth and then we diagonally shift across one fret we use that one four again and then we diagonally shift again and use that one four. So already with those three string crosses I've been using the same left hand fingering. And now make my shift two frets instead of one, keeping the same one four fingering in the left hand and then I finish on the high C which is of course another two octaves higher than when I began. And then I have to remember my jump back here. So it's so cool for guitarists to practice. It's activating that one four stretch. Which means it's using the whole of what we call a position. In guitar playing we think fingers per fret is a position. So we've got four fingers, the four fingers can easily cover four adjacent frets and that makes up a position. So thinking in positional playing, you're thinking, what can my four fingers do in one particular geography or environment on the guitar? And the diminished seventh is exploiting the bottom of that and the top of that, the extremities of it. So we've got our one four, we're stacking our minor thirds. We're finishing there for a two octave version on our top C. So it's really good, almost like a dancer, you're planting your left and then your right and then your left and then your right, your one and then your four. So you're thinking about the release of weight between the fingers as they move across the instrument. Fantastic fun to practice. You can do that anywhere. So for example, if we shift up a tone and move to D. seventh stacking in three semitones our minor thirds up from D and using that one four 
movement across the guitar. So, like I said, some scales are particularly idiomatic or they speak to a particular technique that really works and really is fun to play on the guitar. It really works on your fourth finger control, bringing your fourth finger into the fingerboard, turning it a little bit so it's really facing the instrument when it pushes down and depresses the string against the, the, the fingerboard to get that sound. So not wobbling, not getting flat and not releasing too far away. That's another key thing to make sure to do when you're using the weaker fingers. So to the right hand and the other benefits that we get from practicing the scale, it's not just all about the left hand. The right hand, because you're playing two notes on every string, has an alternating pattern that's very consistent apart from when it gets to the top, because the top has one single note on just the top E string alone in this two octave form that we're doing. So when we get to the top, our right hand pattern, after playing that single note, will be the opposite as we descend down. So this is really nice for practicing. Am I really doing alternation with those quirky string crosses when I go from odd numbers to even numbers in my right hand? So. Think of it like this, I'm going to use I and A because that's the, that's the pattern I favour in my right hand. You might favour I and M or you might start with M because it feels a bit stronger. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. You're going to start and go up to the top and then of course when you have that single note, you're going to be doing the opposite on the way down. So just, just watch. So I'm going to go I to start with and I'm going to say it out loud which is a good way of making sure you're playing with the right finger in the right hand. I, A. So that turn at the top because of the single note really gives this scale another level of interest for our technique and it really helps us work on our true alternation. Are we really alternating on our scales? So I was saying at the beginning of this lesson that some scales suit some instruments more than others and the diminished seventh suits the guitar fantastically. You're using one and four, the extremity of our positional playing. You've got this cool diagonal shift across the fingerboard. It helps the right hand massively in terms of thinking about alternation, reversing it at the top as you descend, so your ascend and descend are different. Enjoy it, try it. Probably you practice major scales, probably you practice minor scales, maybe both the harmonic and melodic form. I might talk about them one day too, but you can have a huge amount of fun practicing your diminished scales. And if you think of the chords that you probably play a lot in, in, in pieces of music, major chords, minor chords, maybe some major seventh chords, the diminished chord is used a lot, it's used a lot in jazz, it's used a lot in 19th century music as well when you want an exotic, interesting sounding chord that might help you get into another key signature or it might help you move into another harmonic environment. So it's a lot of fun to start thinking about the diminished seventh and get it in your ear. And for us guitarists, it relates so well to our hands. Okay, see you soon.